The heading is composite areas. Um, composite, of course, means made up of more than one thing. So we're looking at areas where there are different chunks that you need to consider, consider and be careful with them, okay? So please note, and you can have a look at both of these questions on the board. These are pretty uh, indicative of what you're likely to see in the future. And you'll notice that integration and, and integrals are never mentioned anywhere in any of these questions. They never say integrate this or find this integral, right? The question is area, and we are going to use integrals as our tool, okay? So you can't just uh, willy-nilly, blindly just do any integral you like. You have to be very careful and make sure you answer the question. So, the first step is always to get a picture. And I've given you a bit of a hand by, not completely, but I'm um, giving you a bit of a nudge and showing you this is what these things look like, okay? Not that either of them are, <coughs> excuse me, particularly surprising. You've got a cubic here, you know where the roots are, so I put them on there. What's missing from this diagram is the area in question. It says the area bounded by the curve and the x-axis. Okay, So you can see there are two little chunks that fit those criteria, right? Do you see? Over here, here's one of the areas that's bounded by the curve and the axis, and here's the other one. Okay, no big deal. So, how do we approach this? Now, being that it's a, a composite area, I think it's wise to consider the two pieces that make it up separately then combine. Okay, so we're gonna integrate some integrals, if that makes sense, right? Now, I think the smartest way to talk about this is, especially given you've just drawn a diagram, label on the diagram what's what. Give them names, okay? You've got some colors there, and then you can see, I can just put right on top of this, I'm gonna call this area one, and I'm gonna call this guy area two, okay? If you label them, you can start to talk about them, rather than just random integrals flying around and different numbers appearing in your working, okay? So, I can now say area one is equal to, and now I need to form an integral that corresponds to that area. What integral shall I form? From negative one to zero, okay? Uh, this is the function, okay? Now, it's a bit messy at the moment because I, I haven't like evaluated all of this nicely. Uh, I need to expand this, so let's just quickly do that. This is gonna be y equals x outside of, the pair of numbers are one and negative two. So they're going to add to minus negative minus one, six. and they're going to minus multiply to negative two. Okay. So from there, I don't really need to do another step because I just have to multiply everything by x. So the integrand that I'm actually going to be integrating will be let's have a look. X cubed take away x squared take away two x. Did I get it? Yeah. You happy with that? So there's the integrand. Okay. Now. I want to say, okay, well, I'm just going to do the primitive function, right? So it looks like I'm getting x to the 4 on 4, um, minus x cubed on 3, minus x squared from negative 1 to 0. Happy so far? Does it look all right? Now, please take note of what I'm about to do. Frequently, 0 will be one of the boundaries. Happens a lot, even the next question we're about to do. Zero is often a boundary. In fact, pretty much any time you're getting something that's meeting with the axes, whereas the x or the y, you'll frequently get to zero. Okay? Now you can see this particular function, when you evaluate it at zero, leaves you with zero. Zero, right. But please don't neglect to write that zero down. It's a classic, classic error to just say, oh, it doesn't matter. I'll evaluate it at zero, it just disappears. In many cases it does but it doesn't always. I mean, for example, when we get to things like this which have a primitive function that has, say, an exponential in it, okay? So if, for instance, I was evaluating this, okay? You can see here the zero is not trivial at all. It's kind of important, actually, because this is gonna be, well, two to the one minus two to the zero, which is two take away one. That zero really matters, okay? So please make note of that. I make a big deal out of writing the fact that it's zero because you're evaluating an upper and a lower bound. So far, so good? Cool. Watch out for your negatives, okay? Because when I do minus here, I evaluate this whole thing as one piece, okay? Because I've got negatives here that are going to become double negatives. So just be wary. In fact, help me out, make sure I don't mess this up. This looks to be like um, a quarter plus one. Plus a third minus one. Minus one. Yeah? Oh, because it's minus. Yeah, be careful. Lots of negatives there. In fact, we've actually, I think I've done either two or three lines in this already at once. So if you, um, if you want to be a bit safer, do the line before this, which is 
negative 1 to the 4 on 4, minus negative 1 to the 3 on 3, minus negative 1 squared, just to make sure you really don't mess it up. You shouldn't skip those lines in this answer. Okay, now, I'm going to suggest, on a question like this, okay, I would expect this would be worth about 3 marks, about 3 marks, okay? And a mark will almost certainly not be on this because there's going to be, as you'll see in a second, so much other stuff that's going on. I've got to work out these two areas, I've got to combine them appropriately, etc. okay? You probably will not get a mark like, for example, if I'd gotten this and then gotten this wrong, that probably wouldn't be enough by itself to actually correctly get a mark, okay? Um, maybe half marks if we had half marks, half marks okay? However, what it's valuable there for is to make sure that I do this correctly, that I don't screw this up, okay? That's the primary value of that line for me, okay? So this line here, I think is okay. I'll keep doing that today. Um, I've evaluated the upper and the lower bounds. <coughs> So I've done it accurately. But like I said, happy for you to put that line in to help you make sure you don't make any errors. What are we actually going to get? What have we got here? Uh, minus, sorry, what do we get? 5 on 12. It's just 5 on 12, right? 5 on 12? Because it's negative, negative. negative 5 on 12? Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Um, and which, by the way, you can check and see, right? I did this. I didn't need to do anything to A1 because it's all above the axis, right? So therefore, this ought to be positive. It'd be better, better be positive, okay? So far, so good. Now I'm running out of a bit of space. I'm going to use this here. You move over to A2, okay? Now, A2 is beneath the axis. So I say the actual area is not the integral, but negative the integral. Now, you can put the absolute value sign in here if you like. I would encourage you not to. I prefer not to, just personally. Let me just explain why after I write the integral down. I'm going from naught to two. Uh, yeah? Uh, would you write 5 and 12 units squared? Yeah, I would. Yes. Yeah. I really don't get, like, when you actually use the Because it's asking you the area. It's not asking you the integral. Correct. So why would you write the negative integral? Okay, because I know that this integral, before I evaluate it, I know the integral itself will be negative. Oh, so you're trying to make it positive. But the area is it's uh, positive. I'm measuring something. Okay, I get it. Yeah. All right, now, just let me finish writing this integrand out, and then we'll talk about the negative or the absolute value thing. Okay. Uh, what have I got here? So it's the same integrand. So it's x cubed minus x squared minus 2x, and which luckily for us means it's the same primitive. Okay, So I've kind of done a lot of work already. Now, let me just make a comment. Um, you will see some people, and I'll just write this underneath so you can see what it looks like. Some people will write it like this. Instead of slapping a negative sign on the front, they will slap absolute value signs all the way around. Okay? Now clearly this will give you the right answer. In fact, if you like, you could have put the absolute values here as well. Okay? And you would have got the right answer. It has the effect that we want. It makes everything positive. Okay? Why do I dislike it? Um, or it's just not my preferred method at, at least. Um, the first thing is, like, I don't want absolute value to mean I'm just taking something to be positive, okay? As I've kind of labored, and especially for the extension two students know, this means a whole lot more than just make everything positive, okay? It's about distance from the origin. It's about understanding, like, something geometric is happening, okay? Not just I happen to want this to be a plus sign, okay? Secondly, there's a high correspondence between the number of students who slab absolute value signs around there and the number of students who confuse the positive and negative areas and end up just getting the wrong answer out because they don't really know. For me, I often see absolute value signs around students' responses who are kind of like, I don't actually know what to deal with this, right? I just know I'm supposed to get something positive, so I'll just chuck some absolute value signs there. Now, admittedly, that's like kind of a very negative case to look at, and many people know how to use them properly. But if you know how to use them properly, then you know how to put a minus sign out the front. Right? And I think that is actually what you're trying to do. You know this integral is going to be negative. You want an area. So you slap a minus sign on the front. Okay? So that's my preferred method. Both will be fine. Both will give you the right answer. But I just I prefer to steer clear of it because it tends to line up with the, the candidate's responses that actually don't understand. And so it's like, is it positive? Is it negative? I don't know. I'll just put an absolute value inside the front. So that's how I'm avoiding it. All right, let's go ahead. Maybe you've actually, while I've been pontificating, already worked out what the integral is. I'm just going to write down the primitive here. Catch up with you. Okay, uh, evaluating a 2. So this looks like, okay, let's see here. Uh, 16 on 4 minus 8 on 3 minus 4. 
uh, take away zero, because that's me evaluating it at the lower bound. Okay. Uh, has someone already got what this is? Oh, well, that's 14.4, isn't three. it? Yeah, so it's just negative, negative, eight on oh, three yeah. units, units squared. And of course, you can add those together. I mean, that's going to be 32 on 12, so 37 on 12 as a total area. So that would be my conclusion, by the way. I would say total area, and then I put my pieces together so it's clear how I'm doing this, right? Which uh, I think we just said. That's the number of units squared. Are you happy with that? Yes. Is there a, like, like a difference between writing units, like holding units squared versus u squared? No, there's not. So um, you I can, there's, yeah, the time. yeah, exactly. Um, there's nothing else that I know that u stands for in this context, so it's fine. Okay, now, can I just mention as well, uh, what I've just done, particularly, like, I've, I've named these areas, right? Like this, and this, and then I've made a conclusion at the end. There's a light year of difference between students who just kind of start fumbling around with areas and integrals, and then they end up with something which it's, is this right, is it wrong? I have no idea, because I don't know what any of these integrals mean by the time I come back to check half an hour later in the paper, if that kind of makes sense, okay? This is very easy to diagnose and debug if you need to.